All right, just got to my hotel in New York City. I was actually with the family for a couple of days in Cape Coral, which is outside Fort Myers, near Sanibel Island, if you're familiar. And I just hopped a plane from Fort Myers to Atlanta and then up to New York City. So what I'm doing here is, I think, probably a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Uh, I'm going to, if you're not familiar with Gary V, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, go check out some of his videos on YouTube. I've been a big fan for a long time. I'm, I like to think I have a really strong uh, gut feeling for authenticity and uh, whatever you think about uh, you know about about certain uh, self-help online type people I don't Gary Vee doesn't strike me as that type of person even though he's pandering to that kind of audience uh, he's just a real dude uh, and uh, so hopefully my spidey senses are right I'm, I'm certain they are so I paid for this uh, this one day immersion thing It'll be tomorrow, today's Sunday, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm heading and go jump an Uber and go up to uh, Catch NYC, which is a restaurant here in Manhattan, and I'm going to bring the camera along with me as much as I can over this two-day thing. Uh, I'll also be going to his uh, sneaker launch. Uh, he has a high-top sneaker launch uh, that will be Monday night, so tomorrow night. Uh, so I'm going to try to capture as much as I can. I, I get these feelings like I don't know like kind of like why I ended up riding shotgun with Jay Leno uh, I think uh, I don't know why I just felt compelled every time I got the email to come to with this this one day immersion thing I, I kept I kept feeling this strong pull despite the expense of it to come and do this so I'm here I'm doing it I'm gonna bring the camera along capture what I can and uh, I'll let you know what it's about so we'll see let's uh let's do it all right so i made it to vayner x sasha group is where i'm going so we'll see what's up the emerging technology and vayner smart session is something that i call a, a peripheral session it really is to think about in the next 12 18 and 24 months and beyond where do we see kind of emerging technology playing in the social and digital space its content team so this is everything from animators that are developing short form uh, Saturday morning cartoons for YouTube to translators that are translating his content in 10 different languages and distributing them globally. So when, you, when like, we really think about kind of what's going on just in these three rows of desks comparatively to the whole agency, it's almost two different businesses, right? So to, to have Gary's content team come in, the two people that are leading it, and talk a little bit about how they're you know, trying to always move to the target that he's repositioning um, or how they're adding resources to the team or where are the kind of areas that they're focusing their resources today. Um, this is just an open format Q&A session where we'll do lunch and kind of wrap on those things. Cool. Do they make mistakes and wrong stickers are put on things and you lose money? Yep. And do like your, do sometimes your manager have to ring up people at the register because they didn't, know what to do with the register? Mm -hmm. I'm like, do you understand how much that's actually worth? If you take your average manager who makes 65,000 a year and you take 89 hours a month, and then you have to make this binary math. This is an ROI thing. ROI thing. You need to basically convince <coughs> all of them that they're wasting 200 bucks a month and, and you're gonna give them back 100 bucks. It will kill. Okay. Money in the bank. Okay. I don't know if I've been more confident of a piece of advice in 4Ds <laughs> since we started. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm that confident. SMBs are binarily on short-term economics. If you tell them, you pay me 100 bucks, what they're very bad at is hitting costs. Small businesses are bad at hitting costs. They're, they're too binary. Mm -hmm. They don't see the bigger picture, and this is obviously generalizing, but it's very cliche, especially when you come from zero. Cash is king, you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. And you're not saying like, you know. Okay, a straight ROI conversation. Yep. Okay. They just don't want to give you 100 bucks a month for something that's not gonna be used. Yeah. You gotta convince them that they're wasting 400 bucks a month on hidden fees, on hidden costs that your thing solves for. Yeah, okay. Like yes. literally every one of them is trained through osmosis, which is taking time out of experienced workers to just teach the new kid what to do, right? I'm secretly trying to crowdsource buying the New York Jets. You know, you may want to get more people on your SaaS product. So 
I think that the place where people spend a lot of time on is the equipment, the lighting, the debate of personal brand versus logo, and what the only thing that matters is make shit that people want to watch that you want to talk to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? That makes a lot of sense for you. That's it's all why I do, yeah. it's what you did. It's how it's why it's why it may seem unique when you tell it for them, the audience, but I so understand it. Because when you scratch your own itch, and your itch is your community, it's just perpetual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right? fun. It's how you stumble into your thing. You were doing this, and like, you know, and so your job is to make the best content in the world for small businesses. Okay. Right? You know, like, how to hire your spat and your it's family and member. Broad, like, like, like yeah. not about documentation. And Definitely process. not about documentation. Okay. That's the curveball. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Documentation is selfish. Making a video where you interview somebody who teaches people how to fire relatives is thinking about small businesses. <laughs> right? Right? That's what small businesses, that's one of the biggest issues every SMB has in the world right now. How do I fire my loser cousin? <laughs> I fucked up aunt. My, you know, how do, you know? Yeah. how do I limit my grandfather's yelling at me? Like, it's, it's human stuff. Yeah. So you become that. That's what I always talk about. Be the media company. And, you know, don't make content that's literal to you. What happens next to this whole Gary Vee era, where a lot of people have won off of the thesis, is every, enough money comes in where the ads don't work anymore. That's what happens next. Let me tell you what 2022 is going to be about. Everybody that plays off, that's why I'm glad you're here. You know, you know, because you're going to go, you're going to take advantage of the pay. So I'm glad you're here. You're taking advantage of the pay, and you need to build brand. You guys are in the opposite spectrum. Mm -hmm. And if you yeah. don't have both, you become vulnerable. Vulnerable. You don't get the max upside. Right. Mm -hmm. You can be more like you know, you know. I think a lot about like how I. I've been thinking a lot about how I talk. Like vulnerable isn't you go out of business. Vulnerable is like you don't keep growing, and when you don't keep growing, things could happen. Maybe you're spending too much in your lifestyle based on how your business is and all of a sudden it stops growing, then you actually become vulnerable. Those are things I think about. But yeah, you have to build brand. I'm curious, in scaling so fast in your business, how did you make sure the knowledge transfer happens? Osmosis. Okay, so that's how it's... <laughs> yeah, so like, you know, like, I, like, I am not as comfortable, like, my whole company wants to use your product, except for me, because I'm an entrepreneur and I'm an SMB. Yeah. That's why I know what you need to do. I'm real tricky for you because I don't care about money either, but most do. <laughs> so it's okay that I'm all the way over here. Yeah. I'm not going to be the guy, but like, for the SMB that doesn't want to do it in the, the proper way and wants osmosis, she or he will take you up on, I will save you $4,000, here's how. You are, and by the way, we wasted enormous time on senior people training people through osmosis. Yeah. And, and where we started evolving into more products like you is I started realizing, wait a minute, not everybody learns like me. So I got these and Fs. And so maybe we do need stuff like this in place. Mm -hmm. How, do you think that, have you seen B2B SaaS products leverage influencers and celebrities and that sort of thing as they an will. effective way? They will. Okay. Sure. And is there some... Of course. Go Daddy. Ran Super Bowl commercials. Yeah. Right? Right. You know, keep it valuable. It's not about raw. It's about valuable. Star Wars is valuable. I go into a theater. I escape from my real life for three hours. Like, it's escapism. You guys doing high production is not escapism. Keep it valuable. Step number one, give me this verbatim. You have to go hit up every single podcast that exists. Email them. I don't give a fuck if they have eight fucking listeners email them and offer them as little money as possible for them to live read your commercial at the top of the podcast. And that goes for all of you. Like, small business shows, lawyer shows, like, I don't give a fuck if they're in Denver, like, shit's funny how it actually trickles down. Um, so you need to win podcast pre-roll because I think it's grossly underpriced because nobody knows what it costs. So that's huge. YouTube videos targeted against search queries from Google. But most of all, this is for all of you as well, becoming the media company, you become the total, you become Google, instead of being the second tier. That's why I built Gary Vee. Because it's all going to Alexa. 
This is all going to, I mean, this is how it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. Hey Alexa, I need a mortgage. Amazon's the problem. You know, if it's like, hey Alexa, I need a social media agency, Alexa's the problem. Hey Alexa, what's VaynerMedia's phone number? That's the difference. That's all that's gonna be left. That's all that's gonna be left. Will it get to your industry? Will it get there fast enough that you give a fuck financially? But in the end, that's the world. Brand, nothing else. That's what it is. That's what you have to do. That's why content matters, that's why building your personal brand matters, building your company matters. Content, content, content. Because that's your only leverage against highly funded, multi-trillion dollar funded, global companies that are gonna try to get everything. The mainstream media is trying to make us scared every day. We put all our fucking information every day. We're, we want convenience. The reason I like yours is not so much that I'm giving up the information, I just don't want to give up the two minutes to fill out all the shit. Right. Time. But they do at some point. Of course. Right. When you transact, you're giving information. But the fact that you're putting it in the front, it's what I do. I give away all my best stuff for free in perpetuity with maybe some rationale eventually something might happen. I'm playing the ultimate game of it. Mm-hmm. Right? The bad version of me is I give a little and then it's really a funnel for you to pay me $4,000 a month to be in my mastermind. Right? Actually well, scalable and sell you a $197 ebook. <laughs> How to do this. Those guys. Uh, those guys. You'll see a trend in there that makes you a better creator on Instagram. People don't see hidden value. It's like this hidden cost. People are too literal. That's what they said about social media as a whole. The reason nobody went into social media was it was for kids. That's what Facebook was. Facebook literally was made fun of on a daily basis in real business because I was in real business for being for kids. Now it's only for 60 to 80 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you. you talk about brand. I'm confused about the right hook aspect of it. Good. So I'm building brand, building brand, building brand, and I provided solutions to people, you know, so solutions they can buy what I'm using, uh, but I don't, I haven't, you know, we talked a lot about earlier this morning about you know, advertising and taking advantage of the opportunity. What's your, what's your take? I mean, how do you, how do you manage one, brand so real versus? Quick, real quick, one thing is it's working. Sure. I think you might be thinking, I'm gonna give you a different perspective that I think you're gonna enjoy. I think you should amplify your jabs, not your right hooks. Mm-hmm. That's so, it. So spend money on the jab. Because the jab I do, people buy the stuff and I don't even talk about it. It's magical, mm-hmm. right? You're more Larry Holmes than you're Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. Me too. Which I'm, I'm cool with that, right? Me too. Larry Holmes held the title longer than Mike Tyson. Second question. Wing that house. first part really resonated with you, right? Yeah. You got it? I got it 100%. You're done. Conflict. You're set. You properly thought about amplifying, because advertising, you know, I'm getting goosebumps. Advertising comes synonymous with selling. Mm-hmm. So you were like, fuck, okay, I'm going to spend money. I, in general, I don't like throwing right hooks, because I'm so good at chat, right? You're like, fuck, what am I going to do? That's, isn't that fun? I'll get one out of 100,000 comments that says, you sold sounds that. like you're selling. Yeah. Dude, I still and it, get it, mad. Like it, yeah, it gets me. It. I'm like, shoot. <laughs> I'm the same way. That's why I wrote the fucking book. Yeah. I literally thought about it so much from 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11. I finally got to. What's ironic about Jab to Jab Right Hook was on paper, it seemed like I was trying to help all the people who are always selling, which I was. It's like, slow it down, like a little romance, you know? Ironically, it ended up helping more people that were all jabbing. You and I are probably unique in the fact that our jabs, back to Larry Holmes, are so effective that we win. Mm-hmm. There's a whole group of people who just give, 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 and they actually have to ask. And they were scared to ask. A lot of people aren't natural salespeople. A lot of people are scared to make that move. Mm-hmm. It was really funny to watch it play out. I, didn't really, I absolutely thought it was gonna be all the, those guys, be like slow it down, a little romance, right? Like mm-hmm. give value. It ended up being, a bigger breakthrough for people that were giving value but not making any money because they didn't know how to ask. It's interesting. Anyway, you're gonna kill by amplifying jabs. Because mm-hmm. you're clearly bringing value. Brother, 
the only reason you're selling so much stuff is because you're bringing so much value. Mm -hmm. I get that. Um, so I want you to make more people see the thing that you're bringing value in. Yeah. I spend all my, 80% of my ad money, n excuse me, unless I'm selling sneakers or wine, just to, because I'm learning, plus I have a unique life where I have to use myself to understand certain things that I have to use for the agency. So I'm even doing things that I don't necessarily want to be doing, like selling wine and sneakers at some level because it helps us so much with Vayner. Mm -hmm. Because my clients care about selling product. Mm -hmm. But I spend almost all my ad money on the content that organically shows me it's doing best and brings the most value. And then I spend my own money to help more people get value because I know it resonates with people. And then when you have something to sell, it turns. That's so right. don't don't advertise the my store. My big thing where I really made out, and this is where it's a little bit different potentially for what I know about you, is I don't need to sell a single thing as Gary V because I actually run Vader Media. Mm -hmm. I really fucking put myself in a good spot where I have zero need to monetize my audience. So does my retail business, is that a standalone business? Yes. That's where it can get real good. Mm -hmm. Though, I like what I'm hearing in the relationship you have with your audience. Seems mm -hmm. like it's organic, seems like you're selling things you believe in. Listen, nothing is more exciting than selling something you believe in. Yeah, it's... The, the uh, second you get paid a million dollars under the table to even sell the glue, that's when you're fucked. But if you're actually selling something you actually believe in, you'll fucking win. My biggest problem with people is they sell something they don't believe in. Mm -hmm. They just, it's the thing that they've stumbled into, it's the thing that they just think they'll make the most money on. That's the thing that makes them most vulnerable super long term. If you fucking love it and you believe in it, there's a lot of things I could be selling that would make me a lot more money. <laughs> you sure, know? sure. I love when people, when I do track, like I do things I want to be doing. Like I love showing people how to make, that have 20 bucks how to like start living their life with more money. That's why I do trash talk. There's literally people that leave comments like, Gary Vee, this is not gonna help you buy the Jets. No shit, dick. I understand that eight hours of my time is not making $309 is not necessarily the mathematical equation to get to the Jets. But is it? Because if I help 40 million people live a much better life. If I'm $200 million short, when the time comes, can I crowdfund the last part? I think so. You got me to buy your wine. Just on your free advice. I'm completely convinced, but when the time comes, this whole country is gonna demand that I own the Jets, not want it. <laughs> I really believe that. I, I really agree. genuinely believe that. Full penetration. Full penetration. Completely massive awareness. I, I still would much prefer to be capable of doing it myself because I don't like to ask which is really a funny thing if like then I ask the whole world. You know, it's like almost like back to who I am, pulling from opposite directions. So that's what I think. Fascinating. Building a media team. Yes. Doing it yourself or hiring a Vayner? Yes. Oh, uh, I always think you should do it yourself mm -hmm. because I always think like, I'm just a big fan of that in general. You know, we obviously aspire to be the best. Like Vayner is one big attempt to do something I don't believe in. Right. Like, I believe that everybody should do everything themselves. You learn, it's cheaper, you figure it out. And, and you make and a lot of mistakes. It's back to like, like almost like this fun world I live in. And so what Vayner's entire, Sasha for sure, Vayner for sure, is if you have to, how do I create the greatest solution to something I don't believe in? That's why it's working. It took me a while to realize that's what I was doing. Yeah, I see it. I see that how, why hire young, smart, talented people and then make them better than they could ever be on their own. Uh, but you make a lot of mistakes along you the do, way. You do, and I think that's why we build Vayner Talent. We're starting to understand it. Um, we're starting to think about it differently. We have a new product we're going to roll out on the gallery media side to help people start their podcasts. There's stuff I'm figuring out. It's the same thing with like building a warehouse. You build a warehouse that's and right. you don't know that's how to right. do it. That's and right. and there's nobody that comes in and says right. they we, they come in and say well you pay five hundred thousand dollars we'll show you how to do it yeah, but you right. don't have five hundred thousand dollars because right. it's just starting that's right. and then by the time you have the money then you that's just right. you already know how you to do it. it. Those are my questions. Okay. Hey, Rose here. I'll team Gary. I said it before. I'll say it again. Behind that is Vayner Talent. So there's about uh, 18 people that work on the Vayner Talent team across uh, a dozen or so personal brands. The Empathy Wine team sits over there. 
Vayner Speakers, Vayner Sports, Arjun and I are in this area. So what's cool about this is that less than two years ago, pretty much this entire side of the building just didn't exist. None of these businesses were operating. Team Gary was a fraction of the size, maybe probably less than 10. Uh, Vayner Talent was in its infancy stages, probably two people. Vayner Speakers didn't exist, m to Wines didn't exist, Vayner Sports was one person. Um, so in a very short period of time, 20, you know, 24 months, uh, this whole side of the building is now employed. You guys want to see the office? Take a picture. Yeah, yeah. You get a quick photo of the guys? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually like the podcast we But I think you picked this one because of the view of Madison Square Garden. Ken Griffey Jr. Go. rookie card. Yeah. I think he's being, think he's being dead honest and dead serious. So. Yeah. When he says, like, you know, I endorse people to have a side hustle and I want people to be more entrepreneurial, I don't think he's saying that because he's calling my bluff that I won't do it. I think he really means it. Media buying and planning were the fastest growing you know, divisions of Vayner Media over the past five years. 250 people, all media buying and planning, pretty much exclusively in this section of the floor. We'll see it over there. Operations, legal and finance, uh, and then some brand teams over there. What does buying and planning mean? They're buying ads and things like that? So they're planning the media and then they're physically buying and transacting. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat, YouTube. Like we learned today, like predominantly within the Google ecosystem and the Facebook ecosystem. So this is all media buying and planning. For the most part, some project there. By the way, it's 6.30 p.m. And there's a lot of people here. Decent, decent. I mean, six, it's standard. Uh, on a Monday. Work hours are 8.45 to 6. So, but I think the kitchen's probably pretty full. He's not a nine. He's leaving it. He's really full for sure. So this is all part of not Gary's brand. This is Vayner Media. I want to do over on my life, man. I want to like go work for a cool company. You know, I always live in some crappy small town. This is super rare, though. Yeah, but I could so get a job here, couldn't you? Yeah, I mean, fucking. I could have convinced them. I said, we. I want a do-over on my life. Yeah, you can get one. I want to come. Got a do-over on your life, man. Figured it out. So Tracer, um, what we were talking about earlier, that ad tech tool that aggregates media spends on different platforms. This row of desk over here, go ahead. And that row of desk back there. Those are the 10 engineers they talked about? Correct. Yeah, so these guys technically in the, in the back wall. And then Claude's office back there um, set up like, I mean, she was talking about taking five minute meetings after five minute meetings. Four chairs, kind of looks like a uh, therapist's office. It really is kind of what it is in huh. degree. She just has five minute meetings, 10 minute meetings with people all day. Temperature checks the entire agency at all times. And then Jeff Nicholson, our chief media officer, is out of that office. He's a big, tall guy, so you can see the writing on his windows is actually like in the six, seven footer range <laughs> on his windows. Uh, but he kind of like a beautiful mind, just like writes <laughs> out stuff all day. What do you think they'd pay me to come be chief <laughs> wire management engineer? I want to come and rewire everybody's workstation. I think I could get paid big bucks for that. Is that an everyday thing? That was a mixer. Oh. A recruiting mixer in there. I saw the Oh, okay. They're like, they're like just getting started. It's like 6.30 I know, there's so many people just working. This is real, man. Crushing it. This is grit. I guess you wouldn't want to go home. 
quarter of seven. So my uh, employees that are watching this, you got, we got to figure out how to get you guys to work till eight o'clock every night. That's the goal. <laughs> That's the goal. I, I'll come work with you. And this is the room we spent the last ten hours, twelve hours in something. Like that. So that's a wrap on a really pretty incredible, uh, really long day uh, yesterday. So this next morning I've had some time to decompress. I'm gonna look over. I actually took some notes. I'm taking notes in. I can't tell you last time. I'm not a note taker type. I took very few notes, if any, in college. Certainly none in uh, in high school other than what I had to, uh, but I took some notes that uh, that uh, some things that really resonated with me. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing in life. You know, I've kind of kind of headed down this path of personal discovery and passion chasing, and I I realize how fortunate I am to be in a place where. Uh, where I'm able to do that I and mean, not not too many will ever in their lifetime get to the place that I'm at where uh, I just I feel enlightened like this this place of enlightenment where I'm able to go and do things like this like go to the Gary Vaynerchuk 4Ds uh, be able to one afford to be able to pay for it uh, and then secondly be able to experience it and have a reason to do so uh, and that would be, you know, Obsessed Garage as a brand, as a business, me as a personal brand. Uh, I mean, Obsessed Garage really, really is me and, and what I'm about and who, who I am and, and what, you know, what I, uh, really, a real Obsessed Garage as a brand is what I aspire to be. Uh, so I just kind of look back at some things. A lot of this is, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a business, no matter if you're old, new, uh, if you've uh, you've been around a long time, you've you built it, your family built it a hundred years ago, uh, you've worked for a major corporation, uh, but if you if you're in some form of uh, of marketing or enrolling people in some form or fashion, you know the world has changed really really quickly, and as, as and as cutting edge as I like to think I am. Uh, there's just so much information. The world is moving so quickly. Technology is moving so fast uh, that despite the fact that I have some great things like the uh, YouTube channel, which is the way that I connect with you all, I have you know the Facebook group, which is a voice of 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 the community. It's the you know it's really giving. You know, I think Obsessed Garage. I think the YouTube channel gives us all permission to be obsessed. Uh, and then the, you know, I'm falling on the sword for us, us crazy people. Uh, and then, you know, the YouTube, uh, the YouTube channel then leads to the Facebook group. And the Facebook group gives us all a voice, you know, to not just me a voice, but you a voice. Uh, and then, you know, of course, you know, Instagram is a way for me to just kind of video, or I'm sorry, photo log my life. And I've been lax. I don't know. I'm just not as interested in certain things like... I'm not very interested in LinkedIn. I'm not very interested in, uh, certainly not interested in Snapchat. I'm not interested in the Instagram stories. And so we talked a lot about, you know, the, like if you do follow Gary Vaynerchuk, if you follow him, uh, you'll see a very specific methodology around how he's giving you the information that he has to provide. Uh, and so, you know, I learned a lot about that kind of stuff you know, so forget the entertainment value of this YouTube channel, if there is any, what little entertainment value there is, and think more of it from a, you know, your business perspective. I wish I could have just videoed the whole darn thing, but uh, there's a lot of proprietary information. They're going through a lot of case studies, a lot of clients of theirs. Uh, but it was just a really, really interesting experience. I talk about this a lot. Again, this was a major investment in money uh, to come to this, this event. But I talk about I've talked about this in many different wash and wash and talks and just in in videos in general on the podcast about how you know I'm hoping to capture one or two things out of any experience like this uh, where I come to some sort of training I come to some sort of uh, I get to come to some sort of conclusion 
usually at events like this, I never really conclude anything, uh, but I come to uh, you know just the gathering information so that I can do stuff, execute on things. So I did it in wealth management. I did it when I was uh, selling on theater products. I did it in college. I did it in high school, uh, where I just observe, take it in, uh, try to now. In my older age, I feel like I'm able to enjoy it a little bit more, you know, and be present more. Uh, and so this is one of the very first things where we were sat in the conference room from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. No joke. Like, took five-minute breaks. There were no, like, you know, take 30 minutes here or there. It was just one thing after another, you know, all different types of, uh, you know, talking about how to build a, a digital platform, how to, how to really navigate the modern world and, and the digital environment, how to market in it, how to survive in it, how to build in it, how to connect with people in it, uh, so you could you could apply aspects to life, to business, to everything. Uh, but I sat there and I never once was like, man, I'm done, I'm tired, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to quit. Uh, so that's how I knew I was getting something out of it. So I'll be sure to share more through um, you know, through the podcast, through, uh, of course, the membership program that's coming. Uh, I'm going to be sharing more thoughts on this. Um, I really think um, there's a lot of things that I took away from this that I'm going to implement to hopefully provide value to the YouTube channel, to provide value to uh, just the information that's in my head that I'm regurgitating out onto camera. Uh, and then sharing, bringing, and bringing you along with my life. So, great, great, great thing. You know, I don't really get starstruck. I mean, Gary Vee is super cool and just an authentic dude. I mean, so I, I just look at, you know, like when I met Jay Leno, these are just other people just like me. Uh, and so, you know, Gary's just a, you know, he's just a very authentic guy. Uh, so I tend to gravitate toward people that I believe to be authentic. Uh, that aren't putting on for the camera, that aren't putting on for me, that aren't putting on for anyone. Some, someone who just, just is, there's no extra. You, you know who they are, and I really, really appreciate that. And uh, I think that's what, what makes me gravitate to the greater message uh, that, that he's providing. So, anyway, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching this, and uh, I'll be doing more you know, stuff to just gain knowledge and improve and invest in myself, which then in turn, hopefully I'm allowed to then invest in you, uh, you know, especially if you're you know, younger or older and you're just looking to get out of your own way, maybe I can help to, you know, to be a, you know, if I can fall on the sword. Uh, I'll, I'm, I really, that, I think that's my place. I think that's my skill set is to uh, screw it up uh, so that you don't have to, and you can watch me and laugh at me and make fun of me, uh, and then hopefully, uh, hopefully we can come together and shake hands at some point and laugh about it. So, thanks for watching this one. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I'll see you back in Florida.